So without further ado, um, I just want to paint a picture of where we are oh. today. Uh, so, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So in terms of literature, we said that kind of presence of, of the LGBT uh, narrative uh, um, is everywhere. And so starting with, say, literature, right, uh, we see a significant growth of LGBT literature that is targeting youth specifically over the past decade. So you have this uh, series called The Lumberjanes, which is a popular comic book series uh, consisting of 75 issues that uh, is directed to, to teenagers. And the protagonist is a Navajo trans woman. So a, a biological male who's transitioned to present as female with two gay fathers. So this is the protagonist. Um, in the year 2010, there were approximately 10 books published by mainstream publishers for young adults with LGBT characters in them. By 2016, a mere six years later, the number climbed to 80. So it, um, it, it multiplied eightfold in, mere, in six years. Mm. Remarkable. And then you have the annual Rainbow Book List, which provides updates concerning LGBT books, ranging from infants up until 18 years old. So Infant. there are materials. Infant. Yes, yes. Materials now being produced for the youngest of the young, so that when people first become aware of their surroundings, there is sort of an LGBT kind of presence and, and, and a narrative that is present in their kind of first uh, um first uh, acquaintance with the world, if we can say, right? Which is something that was just, would have been unimaginable just, you know, a very short time ago. Unimagin um, it's unimaginable now, I would say, for many people. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Mm. And then libraries throughout the country, throughout America, as well as probably other Western countries, now host drag queen story hours. Perhaps some people have seen pictures of this. So public libraries, um, elementary schools, they bring drag queens. So men who are dressed very flamboyantly as women with wigs and big dresses and makeup come in and read to children. Um, you know, and the children have a great laugh. And also they kind of become more familiar with and desensitized to uh, this type of behavior, which, you know, until very recently would have just been considered a kind of bizarre fetish that you did in some cabaret in a nightclub on the weekend, you know, dressing up in drag and, and whatever. And now this is being mainstreamed, you know, for children. So this is a very, very different playing field, even in the West, from what we were dealing with just 10, 20 years ago. Um, and things are changing very, very rapidly. So that's literature. Now, if we go to media, we see of the 118 films that the organization GLAD, which is one of the uh, predominant uh, LGBT advocacy organizations, they counted 118 films from the major studios in the year 2019. And 22 of these films contained characters who identified as LGBTQ. So this is 18.6%, which is something like five to six times the percentage of people who actually identify as LGBT in society. Now that number has shifted from, you know, 1.5 to 3% to 5% to 10%. Um, you know, it depends on the way you count what it means to sort of identify as LGBTQ. Mm -hmm. Some definitions are very loose, um, you know, so we have to take the statistics with a, a grain of salt. But, um, but certainly the idea that 20% of characters in movies identify as LGBT is certainly way beyond, you know, um, uh, what we see in, in reality. So there's a sort of over-representation, if you will, just statistically speaking, um, that we see in the movies, but this is something that's been, um, been encouraged. But yeah, there's, 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 uh, there's massive over-representation of, of people in, in the films is deliberate policy. This is not just a random statistical fluke. So there's an attempt here to exaggerate to make a political point, I, I, I assume, ultimately. One, right. Yes. I mean, whatever the motivation behind, it seems like there is some type of uh, something like that afoot here. So, um, and then a, a new database from Insider confirms the existence of more than 250 LGBTQ plus characters in children's cartoons dating back to 1983. 1983 is a long time ago. So I'm assuming the majority of these are probably the last 10, 15 years. Um, but 250 since 1983, which is about almost 40 years. And if you look at the data from 2010, to 2020, especially the latter five years, right? Um, so to 2015 to 2020, the representation of overtly queer characters skyrockets. So indeed it goes like this and then it skyrockets in the last five years, which is right after the Obergefell decision is passed in the United States in 2015, which allowed uh, for same-sex marriage across uh, the country. Um, Sesame Street, SpongeBob, and other such children's shows have all had um, openly LGBT characters by this point. Mm. 